Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, we're going to kind of break down the omega-3 issue with going on a vegan diet. So, omega-3s, we have three different kinds. There's ALA, there's EPA, and there's DHA. One of the issues that comes along with going on a plant-based or a vegan diet is that you're only getting ALA. EPA and DHA aren't in plant compounds. They're only in more of like seafood and fish and those types of foods. So how are we going to get EPA and DHA if you're going on a plant-based diet? What can happen is the body has the ability to convert some of the ALA into EPA and DHA, but it's not a very good amount and our body's not very efficient at it. So for men, it's as little as 8% of ALA into EPA and as little as uh, 4% of ALA into DHA. Premenopausal women can be a little bit better at this conversion process because of the estrogen and estrogen kind of helps this conversion happen. So they can have up to 21% of ALA converted into EPA and up to 9% into DHA. Still not very good. And then on top of that, some people can have a gene polymorphism that actually makes that conversion less efficient and even less likely to take place. And all of this is relying on an enzyme called delta-6 desaturase. And if this enzyme becomes saturated, which can happen in really large doses of ALA, that also can stop that conversion process from happening. So you can kind of see where this issue is coming in. Now, why is this at all important? DHA and EPA and just omega-3s in general, they help build... their part of what builds our cell membranes, particularly in the brain. So that's why they say like fish oil is good for the brain and all these sorts of things is because they're part of the cell membranes and we, we need them. It's uh, essential nutrients that we have to kind of get in. Now, if we're not getting in any form of EPA and DHA, that can start to cause some issues. So it, this has been one of the main reasons why I've been hesitant in going down kind of a vegan path is because of this omega-3 issue of the EPA and DHA. So, you know, you can get your blood checked to see how well you're converting the ALA that's coming from chia seeds, from flax seeds, from walnuts, all of these things that have high LA, L, ALA contents. You can check to see how well is your body actually converting that into DHA and EPA. But for a lot of us, it's probably not going to be that great. And even if it is really good, you still might not be getting as much as would be beneficial compared to if you're taking it in some form of seafood. Now, um, you can also get a 23andMe um, gene testing to see if you have that polymorphism that's going to cause issues in that conversion. But again, you if you want to take money out of your pocket and go there, I would do the blood test first. I would get your blood measures done before going down um, the 23andMe path, but totally up to you. Those are some ways that you can see if this is an issue for you or if not. So how, you know, what's what's the solution? Where can we kind of go from, from here when it comes to this, this issue? How can we combat it? And, you know, what can vegans do? A microalgae oil is the only way that I know of that would be an appropriate way for a vegan to get the EPA and DHA. It would just be really concentrated algae, basically, and that would be the one source that I know of. If you know of others, if you know of ways of getting around this, comment, let me know, because I'd be really interested in finding out. But this is one of the things that's always been really a big issue for me in going down this path and and how to work around it. So only way that I kind of know of would be some sort of microalgae oil supplement. So we can start to have this kind of debate then of, so is going down a vegan or vegetarian path really the best idea? Is it actually more optimal than eating some fish? Is pescatarian maybe the better way to go? you can start to kind of weigh the odds here. So yes, you would get in the omega-3s, the EPA and the DHA if you were eating some forms of seafood. 
but then you also got to kind of think the the ocean toxicity you know the heavy metal content that can be in to, in fish and just the malpractice of, of farming them is it which is kind of the better way to go you know you, do you want to take the end of having to take a supplement all the time to get those that EPA and that DHA or do you want to be a part of you know maybe not the most sustainable or healthy practices and then you got to worry about am I getting you know mercury levels too high am I getting arsenic levels too high because even that can happen with the fish that are on the lower end of the food chain you know how where is this fish coming from it's really hard for people who are living in the interior to get good quality fish as well so both ways have their their pitfalls so should we kind of maybe there's some middle ground here would it be better for some vegans and vegetarians to think about trying to get a good quality fish oil supplement now obviously that's not gonna follow kind of within the normal vegan guidelines because it's coming it's an animal product and you know it's not going to be the most friendly process, but something from like Nordic Naturals or something like that, getting a good quality fish oil supplement, you kind of get the good benefits of the fish without having the negative health consequences. The ethical part is where this gets tricky. From a health standpoint, that might be the best way to go. Yes, you're going to have to take a supplement all the time. So would it be better just to get a krill oil or some sort of microalgae oil and then you could stay vegan without having to harm the fish? That almost becomes kind of a cost thing at that point. But in a sense, not really, because getting a good quality fish oil supplement is going to cost a lot of money as well. So what do you, what do you guys think? Where do you think is kind of the best way to go? Is it better just to take the risk to eat fish? It's just simpler that way. I don't know. Is it better to go the vegan route and get a microalgae oil and then you don't, you kind of get the benefits of the, the EPA and the DHA, but you're not, you know, you have the more optimal ethical standpoint and you're not, you don't have to worry about heavy metals anymore. I don't know what to think exactly on that. And this has been one of the things that's been a debate in my own mind on going down this path of, of vegan or vegetarian is how do I, what's the best way of going around that specific issue? So that's all that I have to, to say about this. And I'm really curious to see what you guys think and how, you know, the current vegans and vegetarians, how you guys are currently coming around this. If you're, if you've thought about it, if this is something that, you know, you've already kind of worked around. And I'm also curious to see what, you know, the, the non-vegan and non-vegetarian folks have to say it how do you think maybe is this kind of changing your mind oh maybe i can just you know i'm totally cool with taking some sort of microalgae supplement or maybe i kind of want to hit that middle ground and just get a good quality fish oil supplement from something like nordic naturals where they actually cold store so they basically store the into the capsules the fish oil under a nitrogen environment so that it doesn't oxidize and you get the good quality fish oil in because that's one of the issues that comes from just the off the shelf fish oil supplements i don't know uh let me know what you think i'm really curious to to see what people have to say and this is something that i'm gonna have to kind of think over and try to figure out what way do i think is better on a nutrition standpoint and everything else which is the best way to go you have the fish where you can get, you know, the healthy fats and, you know, the EPA and the DHA. You also get the healthy protein from it and everything else that comes with eating the fish. But then you also have to worry about the ocean toxicity, the heavy metals and all the downfalls of not being able to get good quality fish all the time. You can go the vegan route where you don't have to worry about those sorts of things. But then you basically have to take in some form of microalgae supplement or you're going to have to hope that you have a really good conversion from ALA into EPA and DHA, which you can check through, like I said, the blood, blood measurements. See how it goes. I want to see what you guys have to say. Really curious. Let me know below. Thanks. Oh, shout.